new one, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you some of the blocks, and we're going to review some of the blocks needed for the project that we will develop. Remember first, we have to start every program with a start function, okay? The blocks are a start function that says that it's where it's going to be, the first part of the program is going to start, okay? So we have the start function and the end function. Remember that these two are necessary in order for the program to have a finish line. Sometimes a program is, like, it makes infinite loops and it goes through different cycles and never finishes. Some other programs or sub-programs must have an endpoint in order to go back to the main program or to the main file. So we have the start and the finish uh, function. Okay. Now, in RoboPro, we have another blog that it looks like a, a rhombus. Well, in this programming language or graphical programming language, a rhombus means a conditional function. The conditional function is a question. If something does this, then it will do that. Or if it doesn't do it, then you will have another sub-program that will um, come out of that function. So in our case, in the middle of the rhombus, you have different types of sensors. Right now, like as you see here, you see a mechanical sensor where it's a button or a mechanical actuator, okay? So what we're going to do is that in our robot, we have different types of sensors. If we right click on the, on the function, we have different inputs, okay? Input 1, 2, 3, all the way to input 8, okay? It's a digital entrance or a digital input where we're going to connect to our microcontroller. Remember that the microcontroller has those inputs. So if you have the sensor connected to your robot and you're going to use the first, the input 1, then you would probably use this. Okay, now th in here where it says type of sensor, the type of sensor in this case is a button or a mechanical sensor. Now we have a photo transistor, okay? We have uh, the contact read and we have the trail sensor. The trail sensor is just an infrared sensor that has an emitter and a, a transmitter and a receiver. So he transmits infrared light and the other uh, sensor receives that infrared light when it hits on the ground, either white background or black background. So that's how it works. When it reaches the black area, then the infrared light will not go back to the, to the sensor. So that's how it, how it works when, when it's uh, stopped. So we're going to use the trail sensor, and here we have the type of connections. If we want, like, for the true statement to go down or the false statement to continue down. Okay, so here's kind of like the types of sensors that we can use. We have the phototransistor, we have a contact read, and we have the trail sensor that we will use in other cases. Okay, so here it changed. So we have one trail sensor. Now that would be one infrared light. On the robot that you're working on, it has two infrared sensors in order to read the left side of the trail and the right side of the trail. So that's, that's why we're going to need two of them. Okay. So basically, what I'm trying to say is this is a conditional. If the if it's reading white, it means bec it means that that sensor it's out of the path. Okay, so I want you to understand that. So basically, when he is reading, when he is reading uh, the path, then he should be on the white one. Okay, so when there is white, he's going to send the one. When there is black on the background, he's going to send a zero, or there's not going to be a stimuli, okay? So remember that.
depending on what the sensor reads. If he reads a white background, then he's going to send a 1. If he is reading a black background, then he's going to send a 0. And that's how we're going to try to correct the robot for our trail sensor. Okay, and here's where the logic applies. Okay, now here we're going to have 2, basically. So we're going to have, remember, I1 and I2 because there are two different inputs and remember it's a trail sensor so we have two of them and with these two and of course the movement of our motors either clockwise or counterclockwise because we have two motors on each part then we can develop this program now this is a simple, like I'm just uh, showing you how the different blocks work because I want you to build the, the sequence or build the program with the blocks. You already know how the connections go. I just, uh, you just need to make it logical, okay? Remember that these two are to move a single motor, okay? Either M1 and, of course, M2. Always remember that there should be two of them. And we have the other block where we can move two motors synchronously. So in this case, we can use M1. If we use synchronous, we can use M1 and M2 in order to move those two motors. Remember that M is considered as an output of the microcontroller that we are using. Okay, now you have direction one, you have counterclockwise or, or clockwise, and the other one you can change how it goes. Okay, so you can also move it from here, and you have some other options. Okay, so if you have an option of distance, and you say that you want the distance of these synchronous motors, you could do it from here, and also the speed. Okay. So you can move M2 a distance and you can move M1 a distance, okay? Or you can move both of them a certain distance. And you can also stop the two, the two motors at the same time. So this is a block where you synchronously work with the two motors, okay? So after knowing how the blocks work, remember, the clue is how to put these two together in order to ask for the robot to correct the movement, okay? If he's going to the white side, then he needs to stop one motor and move the other one. If he's going to the left side, then he needs to stop the other side of the, uh, of the robot and continue moving the other motor. So that's how you need to uh, see it, okay? There are no delays because a delay for a robot is a time where the robot is completely blind. Remember, delays in robotics are only used for something where the robot doesn't need censoring. Okay, so that's going to be it for this part and we'll see how you guys develop the program. Okay, thank you very much.